Gebhard Leberecht von Blücher, first von Wallstadt, Graf, later elevated to first von Wallstadt, was a Prussian general Feldmarschall who most notably led his army against Napoleon I at the Battle of the Nations at Leipzig in 1813 and the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, in alliance with the Duke of Wellington. He was made an honorary citizen of Berlin, Hamburg and Rostock, and was nicknamed Marshal Vorwarts by his soldiers because of his aggressive approach in warfare. Along with Paul von Hindenburg, he was the highest decorated Prussian-German soldier in history. They are the only officers to have been awarded the Star of the Grand Cross of the Iron Cross. Biography Early life Blücher was born in Rostock in the Duchy of Mecklenburg-Schwerin, a Baltic port in northern Germany. His family had been landowners in northern Germany since at least the 13th century. He began his military career at the age of 16, when he joined the Swedish army as a hussar. At the time, Sweden was at war with Prussia in the Seven Years' War. Blücher took part in the Pomeranian Campaign of 1760, where Prussian hussars captured him in a skirmish. The colonel of the Prussian regiment, Wilhelm Sebastian von Belling, was impressed with the young hussar and had him join his own regiment. Blücher took part in the later battles of the Seven Years' War and as a hussar officer gained much experience of light cavalry work. In peace, however, his ardent spirit led him into excesses of all kinds, such as the mock execution of a priest suspected of supporting Polish uprisings in 1772. Due to this, he was a passed over for promotion to major. Blücher sent in a rude letter of resignation in 1773, to which Frederick the Great replied, Der Rittmeister von Blücher kann sich zum Teufel scheren. He then settled down to farming, and within 15 years, he had acquired independence and had become a member of the Freemasons. He married twice, in 1773 to Caroline Amalia von Melling and in 1795 to Amalia von Kolom, sister of General Peter von Kolom. By his first marriage he had seven children, two sons and a daughter surviving infancy. During the lifetime of Frederick the Great, Blücher could not return to the army, but the king died in 1786, and Blücher was reinstated as a major in his old regiment, the Red Hussars, in 1787. He took part in the expedition to the Netherlands in 1787, and the following year was promoted to lieutenant colonel. In 1789, he received Prussia's highest military order, the Paula Merite, and in 1794 he became Colonel of the Red Hussars. In 1793 and 1794, he distinguished himself in cavalry actions against the French, and for his success at Kerviler was promoted to Major General. In 1801, he received promotion to Lieutenant General. Napoleonic Wars Blücher was one of the leaders of the War Party in Prussia in 1805-1806 and served as a cavalry general in the disastrous campaign of the latter year. At the double battle of Jena Auerstedt, Blücher fought at Auerstedt, repeatedly charging at the head of the Prussian cavalry but too early and without success. In the retreat of the broken armies he commanded the rearguard of the army of Frederick Louis, Prince of Hohenlohe Ingelfingen. Upon the capitulation of the main body after the Battle of Prenzlau on 28 October, he found his progress toward the northeast blocked. He led a remnant of the Prussian army away to the northwest, after having secured 34 cannon in cooperation with Gerhard von Scharnhorst. At the Battle of Lübeck his force was defeated by two French corps on 6 November. The next day, trapped against the Danish frontier by 40,000 French troops, he was compelled to surrender with 7,800 soldiers at Ratekau. Blücher insisted that clauses be written in the capitulation document that he had had to surrender due to lack of provisions and ammunition and that his soldiers should be honoured by a French formation along the street. 
He was allowed to keep his saber and to move freely, bound only by his word of honor, and was soon exchanged for future Marshal Claude Victor Perard, Duc de Belluno, and was actively employed in Pomerania, at Berlin, and at Königsberg until the conclusion of the war. After the war, Blücher was looked upon as the natural leader of the Patriot Party, with which he was in close touch during the period of Napoleonic domination but his hopes of an alliance with Austria in the War of 1809 were disappointed. In this year he was made General of Cavalry. In 1812 he expressed himself so openly on the alliance of Russia with France that he was recalled from his military governorship of Pomerania and virtually banished from the court. Following the start of the 1813 War of Liberation, Blücher was again placed in high command, and he was present at Lutzen and Bautzen. During the armistice, he worked on the organization of the Prussian forces. When the war was resumed, he became commander-in-chief of the Army of Silesia, with August von Neisenau and Karl von Muffling as his principal staff officers and 40,000 Prussians and 50,000 Russians under his command. The irresolution and divergence of interests usual in Allied armies found in him a restless opponent, knowing that if he could not induce others to cooperate he was prepared to attempt the task at hand by himself which often caused other generals to follow his lead. He defeated Marshal MacDonald at the Katzbach, and by his victory over Marshal Marmont at Mocken led the way to the decisive defeat of Napoleon at the Battle of the Nations at Leipzig. This was the fourth battle between Napoleon and Blücher, and the first that Blücher had won. Leipzig was taken by Blücher's own army on the evening of the last day of the battle. On the day of Mocken Blücher was made a field marshal, and after the victory he pursued the French with his accustomed energy. In the winter of 1813-1814 Blücher, with his chief staff officers, was mainly instrumental in inducing the Allied sovereigns to carry the war into France itself. The Battle of Brienne and the Battle of La Rothiere were the chief incidents of the first stage of the celebrated campaign of 1814, and they were quickly followed by victories of Napoleon over Blücher at Champorbit, Vauxchamps, and Montmirail. But the courage of the Prussian leader was undiminished, and his victory against the vastly outnumbered French at LAON practically decided the fate of the campaign. However, his health had been severely affected by the strains of the previous two months, and he now suffered a breakdown which revealed the fragility of the coalition army's command structure and just how much the army of Silesia had depended on Blucher's drive, courage and charisma. The result was that for more than a week after the Battle of LAON the army of Silesia played no useful role in the war. After this, Blücher infused some of his energy into the operations of the Prince Schwarzenberg's Army of Bohemia, and at last this army and the Army of Silesia marched in one body directly towards Paris. The victory of Montmartre, the entry of the Allies into the French capital, and the overthrow of the First Empire were the direct consequences. Blücher was inclined to punish the city of Paris severely for the sufferings of Prussia at the hands of the French armies, but the Allied commanders intervened. Blowing up the Jena Bridge near the Champter Mars was said by the Duke of Wellington to have been one of his contemplated acts. About blowing up the Bridge of Jena there were two parties in the Prussian army, nice and now and muffling against, but Blücher violently for it. In spite of all I could do, he did make the attempt, even while I believe my sentinel was standing at one end of the bridge. But the Prussians had no experience of blowing up bridges. We, who had blown up so many in Spain, could have done it in five minutes. The Prussians made a hole in one of the pillars, but their powder blew out instead of up, and I believe hurt some of their own people. In gratitude for his victories in 1814, King Frederick William III of Prussia created Blücher Prince of Wallstadt on 9 April 1241 where the Mongols of the Golden Horde had defeated a Polish-German army but then retreated to the Mongol Empire, instead of invading the remainder of Europe all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. 
The king also awarded him estates near Kreblovitz in Lower Silesia and a grand mansion at Two Pariser Platz in Berlin. Soon afterward, Blücher paid a visit to England, where he was received with royal honors and cheered enthusiastically everywhere he went. Hundred days and later life after the war he retired to Silesia, but the return of Napoleon from Elba soon called him back to service. He was put in command of the Army of the Lower Rhine, with General August von Neisenau as his chief of staff. At the outset of the campaign of 1815 the Prussians sustained a serious defeat at Liney, in the course of which the old field marshal lay trapped under his dead horse for several hours and was repeatedly ridden over by cavalry. His life only saved by the devotion of his aide-de-camp Count Nostitz. As he was unable to resume command for some hours Neiser now took command, drew off the defeated army and rallied it. After bathing his wounds in brandy, and fortified by liberal internal application of the same, Blücher rejoined his army. Neiser now feared that the British had reneged on their earlier agreements and favoured a withdrawal, but Blücher convinced him to send two corps to join Wellington at Waterloo. He then led his army on a tortuous march along muddy paths, arriving on the field of Waterloo in the late afternoon. With the battle hanging in the balance Blücher's army intervened with decisive and crushing effect his vanguard drawing off Napoleon's badly needed reserves, and his main body being instrumental in crushing French resistance. This victory led the way to a decisive victory through the relentless pursuit of the French by the Prussians. The Allies re-entered Paris on 7 July. Prince Blücher remained in the French capital for a few months but his age and infirmities compelled him to retire to his Silesian residence at Kreblovitz. He retained to the end of his life the wildness and tendency to excesses which had caused his dismissal from the army in his youth, but these faults sprang from an ardent and vivid temperament which made him a leader of people. While by no means a military genius, his sheer determination and ability to spring back from errors made him a competent leader. He died at Kreblovitz on 12 September 1819, aged 76. After his death, an imposing mausoleum was built for his remains. Descendants the marshal's grandson, Count Gebhard Bernhard von Blücher, was created Prince Blücher of Wallstadt, a hereditary title in primogeniture, the other members of his branch bearing the title Count or Countess. In 1832, he bought Rad Un Castle in the Opava district and in 1847 the lands at Wallstadt, Legnicki Pole, all of which remained in the family until the flight and expulsion of Germans from Poland and Czechoslovakia in 1945, which forced the family into exile in their mansion Haviland Hall in Guernsey, acquired by the fourth prince and his English wife Evelyn, Princess Blücher. Later the family moved to Eurisburg, Bavaria. The present head of the House of Blücher von Wallstadt is Nikolaus, 8th Prince Blücher of Wallstadt. The heir apparent is his son, hereditary Count Lucas. Ancestry, Krobiela Visser, Lower Silesia, Blücher Mausoleum, Krobiela Visser, Rad Uncastle, Czech Republic. Blücher's house at Two Pariser Platz, Berlin. Legacy after his death, statues were erected to his memory at Berlin, Breslau, Rostock and Kaub. In gratitude for his service, George Stevenson, the pioneering British locomotive engineer, named a locomotive after him, and Oxford University granted him an honorary doctorate about which he is supposed to have joked that if he was made a doctor they should at least make nice and now an apothecary. Three ships of the German Navy have been named in honor of Blücher. The first to be so named was a corvette built at Kiel's Norddeutsche Schiff Borag and launched 20 March 1877, taken out of service after a boiler explosion in 1907. She ended her days as a coal freighter in Vigo, Spain. On the 11th of April 1908, the Panzer Cruiser SMS Blücher was launched from the Imperial shipyard in Kiel. 
This ship was sunk on 24 January 1915 in the First World War at the Battle of Dogger Bank. The Second World War German heavy cruiser Blücher was completed in September 1939, and pronounced ready for service on 5 April 1940 after completing a series of sea trials and training exercises. The vessel was sunk four days later near Oslo during the invasion of Norway. In 1932 he was the subject of the biographical film Marshall Forwards in which he was played by Paul Wegner. It was a part of a group of Prussian films released during the era, when Kreblovitz was conquered by the Red Army in 1945. Soviet soldiers broke into the Blücher mausoleum and scattered the remains, despite the fact that Blücher had been instrumental in the final defeat of Napoleon, the would-be conqueror of Russia. Soviet troops reportedly used his skull as a football. After 1989, some of his profaned remains were taken by a Polish priest and interred in the catacomb of the church in Sosnica, three kilometers from the now Polish Krobielowice. Blücher is honored with a bust in the Walhalla Temple near Regensburg. Blücher also has a boarding house named after him at Berkshire-based Wellington College. The Blücher, as it is known, is a boys' house renowned for sporting and academic prowess. A popular German idiom, ran we Blücher, meaning that someone is taking very direct and aggressive action, in war or otherwise, refers to Blücher. Vasily Blücher's last name was given to his family by a landlord in honor of Gebhard. Campaigns. 1760. Pomeranian Campaign. Seven Years' War. 1787. Expedition to the Netherlands with Red Hussars. 1793-1794, French campaigns with Red Hussars, 1806, Auerstadt, Pomerania, Berlin, Königsberg, 1813, Lutzen, Bautzen, Katzbach, Mocken, Leipzig, 1814, Brienne, La Rothière, Champorbit, Vauxchamps, Chateau Thierry, Montmirail, Laon, Montmartre, 1815, Lower Rhine, Battle of Waterloo, Works. His collected writings and letters appeared in 1932. Gesamt Melter Schriften und Briefe, Blücher, York, Nisenau, compiled and edited by Edmund T. H. Cower. His campaign journal covering the years 1793 to 1794 was published in 1796. Campaign journal der Jahre 1793 and 1794. A second edition of this diary, together with some of Blücher's letters, was published in 1914. Vorwärts. Ein Husserentage Birch und Feldzugsbriefe von Gebhardt Leberecht von Blücher, introduced by General Field Marshal von der Goltz, edited by Heinrich Conrad.